Shalom. This week's Sedra is Sedra's Vayishlach. Rabbi Shilon, the son of Elezer, was a scholar in the generations that preceded the destruction of the second base of Mikdash. He is quoted in a mission on Perkei Avos as having frequently taught that one should not appease someone when they are angry, nor should they try to comfort a person when their recently deceased member of their family has yet to be buried. And there are other times when a person simply can't focus on the things that are happening outside of their current overwhelming situation. When Rabbi Shimon the son of Elazar was the first, while while Rabbi Shimon the son of Elazar was the first to teach that one should not appease someone when they are angry, in this week's to- sedra we find that Yaakov practiced that lesson a thousand thousands of years before Rabbi Shimon taught it. This week's sedra opens with Yaakov attempting to appease Ace of his brother. Over twenty years before, Yaakov had undermined Esav's plan to get their father's blessing, and dressing as Esav, had received the blessing himself. Esav had, upon learning of this, Esav had threatened to kill Yaakov. Esav's threat caused Yaakov to flee, and twenty years later he decided to try and appease Esav. Our sages observe that Yaakov took a three-pronged approach to meeting his brother. Yaakov prayed that Esav would accept his diplomatic gestures and greet Yaakov in peace. He sends gifts to Esav with a message of his wish to reunite. And Yaakov splits his camp into two groups, so that if Esav decides to attack, At least half of Yaakov's family will be safe and continue. Why did Yaakov wait so long to try to appease his brother? Yaakov knew that in the years and even possibly decades following Esau's threat to kill Yaakov, Esau would be stuck with his threat. Esau couldn't renege on his threat for a number of reasons. First, Esau was a leader of mercenaries who looked to him to model ruthlessness. Forgiveness is not the nature of the cruel. Second, to forgive Yaakov, Esau would need to establish himself as superior to Yaakov and would need years to do so. Third, Yaakov knew that more than anything else, Esau would need time to show that losing their father's blessing did not have an adverse effect on Esau's life. Angry people cannot focus outside of their own anger. It is beyond their capabilities to concentrate on logic or think rationally when they are encompassed by their anger. Yitzhak and Rivka had convinced their son Yaakov to flee when Esau threatened his life because they knew that nothing could calm Esau down at that moment. Yaakov understood that it would take years to reunite with his brother and waited for, until then to make up with him. Rabbi Shimon, son of Elazar, taught the lesson of uncontrolled anger to those trying to deal with the angry. His lesson extends to those who get angry as well. Since anger is uncontrollable, it is a dangerous emotion to possess. One should refine their character until to the point where they become angry infrequently or even at all. The second lesson is that when, when angry, one should try to best calm themselves because nobody else will be able to do it for you. Shabbat Shalom.